So we're going to try and make connections to radicals, which are like root functions um, and exponential functions. So we have three little examples here, and then we have a fourth one where we're going to simplify some stuff. Um, the very first one, we have some base. So notice I've used a letter as a base. Um, and the reason I've done that is because we're just going to go over like the general principle. We're not going to actually try to carry out an evaluation of it. If there was a number, we could evaluate it. Um, as a fractional exponent, it can be tricky. I mean, if this A value had a number, you could probably just plug this in your calculator and your calculator would solve it for you. But for it to make a little more sense to you, we have to know a, a principle. And we'll say the principle is um, we have X to the 1 over Y, we'll call it is the equivalent to the yth root of x. So in other words, what we're essentially showing is there's a relationship between um, an exponential function and a root or a radical function. Um, the reason there is a, uh, a relationship to these is when you're squaring something or a cubing or whatever, you're taking the base and you're multiplying it by itself that many times. Yeah. The root of something is you're looking for numbers that are multiplied by themselves a certain number of times that equate to something. So they have a relationship. They're similar to each other. We use different notation, though. Okay, But realize that this is the same. This radical can be written as a fractional exponent. Um, so let's say in the first one, I didn't give an instruction, but let's say it's the question asks you to write it as a radical. Um, one of the first things you'll want to do is decompose that fraction. And what that means is there's kind of two numbers there. I'm going to make this a multiplication um, of a power of an exponent. So 7 I can write as a fraction. Technically, I can write it as 7 over 1 is multiplied by 1 over 5. Okay, And if I were to put that together, I end up with 7 over 5. So I've actually just broken it apart. Yeah. Um, my next step, and I'm going to go very slow step by step as we do this. 7 over 1 I can just write as 7. And there's a rule in uh, um, multiplication that it doesn't matter the order. So I'm actually going to have the 1 over 5 first times 7. This is still the exact same thing. The reason I'm doing this is because I want us to realize that, oh, take a look at this. This is a fractional exponent with a, power, uh, with a numerator of 1. So now I have that numerator of 1. It turns out I can rewrite this base as a radical inside the root. And the root is to the <laughs> denominator of that fraction. So if I want to apply this fraction to this value here, I would say a, and then it would be technically to the fifth root um, of whatever a is. And I still have that 7. So that's 7. We can write it like this, outside the root. Or another way of writing it is you could say a to the seventh all underneath the fifth root. And that has to do because, you see how I rearranged the order here? Yeah. I could have put the power to it first, like we did here, and then applied the root. Or we can apply the root and then apply the power. It doesn't matter. So if the 7 is underneath or over, you'll always end up with the same answer here. Okay. So just realizing that there's a relationship there. Um, which then brings us to our second question. Second question maybe asks us, can you write this as an exponential function? And very quickly, we just relate it back to this concept. Instead, we're taking this root here and make it an exponent. Um, so I have a power of 3, so I can technically write this like b to the power of 3, put it underneath. I don't have to. But then the question becomes this root. What is the value of this radical here? I haven't written a number in. One. Um, actually, in this case, normally if there's nothing written there, we call it a square root. And what that means is there's an invisible 2. And the reason there's an invisible 2 is because we're trying to find two numbers that when they multiply by each other, they're equal to b. So there's number one and number two, and they're gonna be the same number. Any other number we'll write down there, like a four, or in this case, I wrote a five down here, but if there's nothing here, it's an invisible two. So in math, there are invisible numbers, like ones, when we're multiplying or dividing, we usually don't write them in. Zeros, we don't add or subtract by. Roots, we assume there's a base two. Eventually, you'll do log functions or ln, and they leave some other letter um, invisible numbers out. Um, so what that means for us is that uh, this can go to the power of a half. This root, ooh, look at this gross Tracy guy here. Um, this radical here can be written as this exponential, a half as an exponential. And then to simplify, well, when I have a power of a power in exponents, I multiply the two. Well, three times one over two out is the same as multiplying three over one times one over two, and we do numerators by each other and denominators, and that would be the exponential way to write this, b 
3 over 2. Okay. Um, the last one I've purposely done with some numbers that are probably not too hard to do. Um, I can quickly get the C. Let's say we've picked up on our pattern here. This is a fourth root, so I know it's going to be a fractional power of 1 over 4. So I have C to the 1 over 4. And then we're going to multiply it by 8. Same thing, we're just doing it in a different order. Here I had the fraction on the outside. Here I have the fraction on the inside. doesn't matter. It's a, I think it's associated property multiplication. doesn't matter the order. So 1 quarter times 8 is actually going to be 8 over 4, which I can simplify to just c squared. So instead of trying to carry something like this out, let's say c had a value. Maybe it was, I don't know, 10. Instead of putting 10 to the power of 8, which is a, quite a large number, and then trying to fourth root of that, if I just simplify my exponents, this became a much simpler question. So this is part of the reason we do that, is we can simplify all these actions here. Um, last one we'll look at is where we actually have some values, but we want to simplify. So it looks like in my exponent I have a variable, and I haven't set it equal to anything. In fact, maybe we'll just say this is a function, f at x, which means I'm not solving for x, but I do just want to simplify. So the first thing I look at is I have a division question. And there is a rule of, um, of powers that if you're dividing two powers of the same base, so let's say we have x to the a over x to the b, this can be simplified as x a minus b. That works out nice. But the biggest key here is that our bases have to be the same. And if we take a look at ours, base is 3. This is a base of 27. These are not the same. What a question like this wants us to recognize is that 27 is some power of 3. 3 to something is equal to 27. So the question is, we got to solve this piece. Now, you can use something called the log to do it, but you may not have introduced it yet. So they might be just doing some trial and error, to be honest. So you can start with 3 squared. And it gives us 9. 3 cubed. I can put this in my calculator. Turns out 3 cubed is 9 times 3, which gives us 27. So I can now replace 27 with 3 cubed. So when we go to simplify, we'll go 3 to the power of 3. And then I still have this exponent on the outside, 3x, all divided by 3. Well, that's a terrible looking 3. Let's try that again. 3 to the x minus 4. Okay, before I apply this simplification here, I'm going to simplify this. This is a power of a power, which means I multiply. 3 times 3x, I can write that on the side, 3 times 3x. Um, well, in this case, I just multiply the coefficients. I'm going to get 9x. So 3 to the power of 9x, we still don't know what x is. And 3 to the power of x minus 4. Well, if I apply this rule here, I get the same base. So I can simplify this to just 3. And I just got to subtract the power on the numerator, which is 9x, by the power in the denominator. So I minus. But when I minus, I got to minus everything here. So I'm going to actually put it in brackets, x minus 4. And the reason I do that is because I'm going to have to apply this distributive property to both of these. Okay? So when we do that, we get 3, 9x. And we multiply, think of this like negative 1 being multiplied. This is another example of like a negative, uh, an invisible number. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. I can simplify these two terms. That actually ends up being 3, 8x plus 4. That would be as simple as I can get it because this is still a function. I haven't set x equal to anything. I don't really know what it represents. Um, it could be so many different answers. But this would be a way of simplifying. And the key piece to the simplifying is I really need things to get into the same base. So I either scale a base up or I try to scale the base back down so that the bases are the same in these questions. Okay, So that was quite a bit we went over. We had a whole bunch of laws and then we did a simplification piece.